Hey gang, it's me, and uh, you know what I was thinking? It's been a while since we talked about the film stuff, so I thought, what better week to do it than my birthday week? Yeah, it finally happened, I turned 40, but uh, what can you do? Now, as a big grown man, I of course am scared of nothing. Apart from the dark, oceans, conservative. Nevertheless, I've been working my way through a ton of horror content recently. I watched The Watcher, which was um, disappointing. I watched Werewolf by Night, which was great fun. And I also watched Spy Kids 2, which was... Bean chilling. Oh. Haunting. This led me to watching Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosity, uh, which came out last month. I would have watched it and made a video about it then, but I've been a little bit busy, so I apologize. I was thinking, hey, this guy makes cool stuff. So maybe this show that he's made is cool. And let me tell you, Watcher, it's pretty cool. It's an anthology series, so each episode is its own self-contained story and there's not really a connecting thread throughout. I'm sure there are some interconnected things like a lot of HP Lovecraft references, but none of the episodes actually intertwine with each other, which I like. It's kind of like American Horror Story in that regard, like each of the seasons of that show are their own stories, and then they'll try and connect them in Apocalypse and it just doesn't work out whatsoever. So this is kind of like that, but it doesn't connect them, so it's better. Each episode also has its own style because they're all directed by a different person, so they've all got their own themes and cinematography, and of course, classical horror style. So of course, you've got your classic haunted house, you've got your biblical horror, and then a bunch of eldritch stuff, and as I mentioned, loads of HP Lovecraft, so that's all really cool. And to introduce each episode, the big G himself comes out and introduces what the episode is about, gives you a bit of preamble about that particular item or the particular thing that the episode is surrounding, and also tells you who the director is going to be, which is really cool. I don't know what it is about this, but I could honestly watch an entire show of Guillermo just coming out and talking to me about creepy stuff. I don't know what it is, but something about this man is just so wholesome and charming, and I just get so excited for each episode. Our story tonight is the viewing, and the director is Thanos Cosmatos. You said it, Guillermo. Anyway, I watched the whole series and I thought I'd make a video just for you to review every single episode and rank them from worst to best. Why? I don't know, it's been a while since I did a video like this. You gotta let me have one every now and then. Now, to review each of these episodes, I'm gonna spoil them and tell you exactly what happens in the interest of, you know, giving you context. So if you wanna watch the show first, completely blind, I recommend you do go watch that first and then come back and uh, we can go through it. Okay, you ready? Let's go. Episode one, lot 36. Overall, this episode, it's pretty good. It opens up the show well and kind of sets how the rest of the episodes are going to turn out. Overall, it's a decent episode, and uh, I think it says a lot about the series that this is one of the weaker episodes, and it's not really that bad. It's just fine. None of the episodes are really that terrible. Some of them are just okay, and others are really, really good. Now, there's definitely elements I like, such as buying the storage unit from a guy and then searching in it and finding creepy stuff. I really think that's an interesting idea, and by itself, it could be something that works quite well. The problem is they just cram a load of other things in there, like. He's in debt, which, I mean, fair enough, that's why he's buying the things, but he could just be buying them because he's poor, he doesn't necessarily need to be in debt. I get that's why he has the pressure on him, but, I don't know, it just kind of felt like something else to take away from the story of this guy searching through the storage unit. Exposition dump in the middle from the creepy German guy, telling him that he's a Nazi, and that he was a demon summoner, it kind of like, it took away all of the what is happening from it, and I'm just like, oh, this is happening, so when they get there, they're probably going to find the demon. We saw a couple of photos at the start showing that this guy, oh, probably is a Nazi, but we didn't have it confirmed. So it would have been better to just leave it, you know, show, don't tell. You know, just have newspaper clippings saying, oh, his sister went missing, uh, suspected uh, occult events or whatever. Also, the main character, complete moron. You see that crime scene and you think, yeah, I'm just going to walk into the middle of this ring. Either it is a demon, in which case, what are you doing going that close to a demon? Or it's not a demon, in which case, what are you doing going that close to a corpse on the floor? I get he's in debt, but would you really just walk into this room, especially when they say it smells like piss and or shit? and there's a corpse on the floor, because I definitely wouldn't. I'd just be like, hey, Lone Shark, there's 300k in there, collect it from there, guarantee 300k, baby, you can have it all. That clears my debt 10 times over, and then just run away to Mexico. Um, but this guy hates immigrants, so that probably wouldn't work out for him. Also, the director of this one was Guillermo Navarro, who's directed a ton of stuff I've not watched, uh, but was the cinematographer for Pacific Rim, some of the Twilight movies, and now in the Museum 3. I don't have anything to add off this, I just think that's pretty funny. Overall, a pretty mid episode, I'll give it about a 6 out of 10. It's not terrible, it's not amazing either, definitely one of the weak ones, um, so probably not the best one to start off with, but it's just fine. On to the next one. Graveyard Rats. The rats are all like this. Weirdly, this one follows a similar narrative to the first one. We have a guy in debt who's been forced to do less than moral work, but this guy is robbing graves. Yep, yeah, I, don't, I don't love this one, it's, it's not great. I don't know why, I don't know if it's the CGI 
or what, but uh, I just don't like this one. And it, like a lot of people seem to agree with me. I've like breezed over some of the reviews of the episodes for this one. And a lot of people seem to think that the rat one is definitely the weakest. I think it's really just got a lot to do with the pacing. It's the shortest episode by far. It's only 37 minutes long and pretty much 20 minutes of it are spent in the tunnels. There's not a lot of build up to scary stuff happening. There's not a lot of scary stuff that does happen unless you're scared of giant rats. If you're really scared of rats, this episode will probably be a lot scarier for you. Um, but because I watched the rat movie, <laughs> that's kind of all I can hear where I see this giant rat that makes all of the rules. I'm the giant rat that makes all of the rules. I also think they used debt twice in a row and that was a really bad idea. It just kind of make it feel a bit like a retread of the last episode, but in a different time frame. And uh, I did like the time frame and the guy he talked to with the, the cool accent, he was neat. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I, I don't know, I just didn't really enjoy it. Also, the main character just wasn't really anything. And you don't feel anything when he dies because it's off screen. And, you know, you don't love him, but you don't hate him, so you don't really feel anything. Overall, this one really isn't for me, so I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. It's not terrible. There's nothing that's, like, extremely bad about it. Like, it's not super boring to watch. It's relatively engaging. But there's just nothing there that makes it, like, actually really good or memorable. Like, I could probably never watch this one again, and that'd be just fine. Whereas a lot of the other episodes, I'd be like, mm, I might fancy watching this just for a quick spook. But definitely not this one. Episode 3, The Autopsy. I love this episode it is such a cool concept of a body invasion creature like this causing such a massive mess and then worming its way out of it by getting to the medical examiner and then it's just such a cool concept and the way that it talks about it and tells the doctor exactly what it's going to do is super creepy like can you imagine being strapped to a table and an alien is next to you like yeah i'm going to invade your body and it even says you will be inside but you'll be mute you'll have no control you'll basically just be watching and feeling everything that's going on but you will be able to do nothing about it it's pretty spooky now it's not a super scary episode sure there are a couple of moments of you know spook and tension when the doc goes into the fridge and you see all the corpses and you think it is one of them going to move and then one of them finally does it's pretty spooky and pretty scary but most of it comes from the actual concept of the thing itself because the effects are incredible and the performance by the doctor and alan sykes the alien whatever you want to call it are excellent now the one thing that brings this episode down is the start this episode is close to an hour long and the first 25 minutes are spent either in flashback or in the doctor and the police chief talking about said flashback the first time i watched it i was so bored like i was literally falling asleep fair enough it was like kind of late but i was kind of falling asleep watching the first half of this episode and then these and a half like whoa this is really really cool as soon as they get to the medical office it gets really interesting i feel like they could have just shortened the explanation or maybe a quick montage maybe like five minutes if that and then the doctor goes to the medical office spends a lot more time there drag it out drag out the scene between uh, the alien and the doctor as long as possible because that scene is fantastic and that'd be the only thing that i'd change but again i'm not screaming around. i'm not gonna tell you how to do it i just really like the episode it was great also hope that the protagonist of the episode is actually likable and has a relatively happy ending sure it wasn't anything special it wasn't a superhero but it was like you know what bitch if this alien is gonna ride my body and try and force me to do these horrible things i'm just gonna kill myself then he can't do anything about it. What an absolute badass, honestly, I gotta say. Seeing him mutilate his own body to save the police chief and God knows how many other people is pretty badass and pretty disgusting and a very satisfying conclusion for the episode. Overall, I absolutely adore this one, so I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10. The only thing I would change is that beginning. Other than that, perfect. Next up, we have The Outside. Now, this episode takes place over Christmas, which was a little bit jarring to watch um, at the end of October, beginning of December, because that is too early for Christmas. Christmas is the month of December at most, and that's it. Now, this one is a bit of a mixed bag. I like a lot of things, like her torturing herself and losing her mind in the pursuit of beauty is a pretty cool idea. Uh, the body horror on her skin is really, really gross, and I really enjoyed that. The murder of the husband, as I said, super disturbing. The guy gets stabbed in the head, has a pretty hilarious reaction of like, oh, dumb, I've been stabbed. Oh, this, this is bad. Can you please get me a towel? And she's like, yes, certainly. And then she acts him in the back while he's confused, and the entire time he's just... It, it doesn't know what's going on because he's had acute brain injury. It's pretty disturbing, really. I also really like the music of the episode. It's great for a lot of classic horror violins going off, which I really enjoyed. And I also really like the guy talking to her through the TV. I get, you know, the very obvious message of, you know, let consumerism is bad. Um, and the guy on the TV is the embodiment of consumerism, if you will. Um, telling her to buy more stuff was a pretty obvious message. Um, you know, it, it, it landed well enough for me though. Now, I didn't really love how unbelievable all the characters were in this one, uh, particularly the really vapid women that she worked with. I don't, I can't imagine that anyone actually speaks like this. And if they do, why would anyone want to be like them? I just think, wow, that is really weird and kind of pathetic. But to each their own, I suppose. That might just be me. But yeah, I just didn't think any of the characters were really believable. 
Um, the husband is fine enough, but the women at work are just truly, truly terrible and really freaky women. Like when she, her rash starts going bad, like, wow, that looks really bad. Yeah, you might want to get that sorted out. <laughs> I'm laughing at bitch, having a weird reaction over it. She could die if you don't get some help. Luckily, she doesn't, but still, it's a weird reaction to have. Overall, I do still really enjoy this episode, even if it isn't completely horrifying and even if uh, the characters aren't the most realistic, it's still a lot of fun and I very much enjoyed it. It definitely doesn't feel as long as it is. It's 63 minutes, which I believe is one of the longest episodes, um, but it doesn't really feel that long. It's quite enjoyable and the pace keeps going very well. I think I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Like I said, the only thing holding it back is those totally unbelievable characters, but that doesn't make it unbearable. The most unbelievable ones and the most unlikable ones don't have a lot of screen time, so it doesn't really matter. Episode 5, Pikmin's Model. This episode is really cool. I enjoyed the time period and the concept of art totally corrupting someone and sending them to the point of madness is really interesting. Curse times are always cool and these ones are pretty serious and pull no punches, resulting in the death of a child. And uh, in a pretty gruesome way, might I add. Very nice. Nice shot! It's also one of the scary episodes with a few jump scares that are very well earned. There's not a ton of them, but there's one or two that definitely get you and especially the one when he goes to meet the father and the woman appears behind him. That one absolutely got me. I nearly jumped out of my seat. It was that spooky. Don't get me wrong. It's not a super scary episode in the entire episode. I wasn't like oh, oh, shaking in my seat. But there are a couple of bits that are super duper creepy and the art of Pikmin is very creepy. So I appreciate that. And the only thing that I didn't really like is the escalation of Thurber's madness. He sees paintings, thinks about them for 20 years, kind of stays in the same level of madness without getting any worse. And then all of a sudden goes to one to 1,000 over the course of a few days because the guy comes back. I think it would have been nice to see him fall more and more mad and maybe see more of the darkness in him rather than Pikmin because all that happens is he actually gets rid of the... I mean, to be fair, he does kill Pikmin, which is pretty dark. All happens after that is like, right, I'm done with this. I'm safe, baby. I'm all good now. I feel fine. And then um, he goes home and his wife is just is just done. The dinner party is a total nightmare. Also, it would have been nice to see a few more of the monsters from Pikmin's art. We see the one monster, to be real, it would have been cool if there was a scene of um, Thurber trying to escape the house and all around him, he just sees the monsters from the paintings. It's like, this is why Pikmin has been drawing this because these things are all around him constantly. And now that Thurber has seen one of them, he sees all of them. But no, we just see one and he goes home and sees that his wife's done that to his kid. So, you know, a little bit of a shame there, but what can you do about it? Overall, a really strong episode, definitely one of the better ones. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Next up, we have Dreams of the Witch House. Yeah, I didn't like this one. This is really one of my least favorites. I'm watching it a second time for the video, but it has not helped at all. And I think my main problem is the concept and the tone. And that's not a good thing to have, because that's pretty much the entire film. Bill, episode, what are we watching? First of all, the concept. Why is this guy so dead set on rezzing his sister? I mean, obviously, I know. It's terribly sad, but like 20 years have passed. Is he going to move on at any point? Like, he's trying to bring back a ghost child version of his sister when he's now a fully grown man. It's just super weird. I get that he loves her and all that, but it just doesn't work for me. It might work better if she had died a week ago or a couple of weeks ago, maybe even like a year ago. But this thing is like 20 years ago. How's he not just admit defeat and been like, you know what, it's over now. I think that is really what didn't do it for me. And also the happy narration at the start and the rats who was really upbeat and comical just kind of ruined the tone of the episode. And I just really didn't like it. There's a couple of good scenes. Like I do quite like the scenes in the spooky forest. They're quite good. I of course love when he tells the rats to fuck off. That's brilliant. And the scene of the witch creeping through the window is by far the spookiest thing in the entire episode. But I just don't really love it. I think I'd have to give it a 4 out of 10. It's not terrible, but compared to the other episodes, it's just not really anything special. And I don't love anything about it. It's just all very meh. Next up, we have the viewing. Now, I love a lot of things about this episode. Pretty much all of them have got to do with the style. The cinematography is amazing. The visual style, the bokeh, the anamorphic stuff. It's all brilliant. The soundtrack, fabulous. I love everything about it. It is a sensory treat. But it's let down just a little bit by the content. This episode is like 99% style and 1% substance. Because nothing happens, they get there, they sit in a circle, don't really talk about much apart from each other. It's good It's good for characters. Like, you flesh out the characters a lot more in this episode than you do any of the others. But the actual object and, you know, the main focus of the episode that's the creepy thing, because this is a horror series, doesn't get any attention. They just kind of go in and like, hmm, it's a meteorite. Have you tried scanning it? And they're like, yeah, we ain't got nothing about it. Tag is like, yeah, it's, it's kind of it's kind of psychic. I don't know what about it. And then that's it. They all just like kind of die or run away. Nothing happens. Like these are interesting characters and all, but I think this alien space rock might have been more interesting to learn a little bit about it, or at least what they think about it, and then you know build up to it cracking and exploding and killing them all a little bit slower rather than just immediately getting to that point. Now, like everything else, the visual effects of the rock killing them is fantastic. The face melting, the head explosion. The creature itself all look fantastic. The director of this one, by the way, did Mandy, so it's obvious that this episode is going to look amazing because that film also looks amazing. But 
It is old style and not really a lot of substance because it's a shame because the style is just that good. If we're just judging it on the style, it's a 10 out of 10 above that. But as the episode is, I'll have to give it a six because the content is just so lacking. It drags it way down. It's just kind of a character thing where it should have really been a horror thing with more focus on, you know, the rock and creepy stuff rather than oh, I'm a music artist, man. And I just haven't had the inspiration recently. Like good for you, Randall, but that's not why I'm here. Episode 8, The Murmuring. This episode was by far one of the most traditionally scary ones to me, but it also had one of the happiest endings, which is a bit of a weird combination. Now, the haunted house of the creepy ghost boy and the mother, especially the scene in the bathroom where she sees the boy in the bath and then the mother screams through the black door, that was pretty bloody spooky. And uh, it, it was, I was pretty tense watching this one, I'm not gonna lie. I, there were some moments when I was watching through my fingers because it was freaking me out a little bit, but you know, I'm a big boy, so I didn't do that the entire time, I promise. I think this has all helped because this one was directed by Jennifer Kent, who made The Babadook. And uh, you can see the similarities in the cinematography, you know, the long lasting shots into the darkness, where you really question, did I just see that? Or is it in my head? And it really makes you kind of feel a little bit like Nancy, like, wow, that, that can't have been real. I really quite liked it overall. It was a slow burn and the story of everything being slowly revealed over the duration was really well paced. Finding out more about the tragedy that happened to the couple as well as the tragedy that happened in the house at the same time was really satisfying and slowly gave you a picture of what was actually going on. Now, the one or two things I really didn't like is how quickly it concludes. Edgar leaves and the haunting begins and then within five minutes, the episode has ended. Like it goes from, you know, like kind of a three to a 10 and then to zero in the span of like five minutes. And it's very, very jarring. It might have been better to have this happen with, you know, maybe 10 minutes left. Just give it a little bit more time to have some more spooky scares and build attention a little bit more, you know, rather than just immediately concluding. And the other thing I don't really like is how the story of the mother and the boy is confirmed by the groundskeeper. I love the ambiguity that, you know, this might all be happening in her head. Edgar doesn't believe it. Even when she records it, there's no proof of it. So it really makes you think that, you know, this might actually be in her head. She might just be going insane. Or the house is driving her insane. It's one of two things. Then when the groundskeeper's like, oh yeah, the lady that lived here, yeah, she, I don't know why I'm talking in this accent. Oh yeah, the lady that lived here, she did die. She, the, the boy drowned and then he jumped off a, 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 it gets confirmed by the groundskeeper as being real. So then you're no longer questioning if it's real. So you're now questioning, you're nothing. You're not questioning anything. You're just like, oh, so that's what's happening. She's been haunted by the ghost. Okay. And then it kind of takes a little bit of the tension and the questioning out of it. Imagine how much better it would have been if you didn't know and you were thinking, well, even if it was really in her head, she got relief at the end. So did it matter? Anyway, I'll give it eight, seven out of 10. Uh, like I said, I really liked it. It was one of the creepier ones, definitely one of the scary ones of a bunch of well-earned jump scares. But the speedy end brought it down alongside the lack of ambiguity towards the end as well. So now that we reviewed them all, it's time to give them a ranking from worst to best. And if you're keeping score at home, uh, you can probably know how this one turns out. But if you're not, let's get into it. Coming in last place, we of course have Graveyard Rats. Like I said in the review, this one is just, it's just nothing. Nothing real happens in this one. It gets in the tunnels and then rolls around for like 15, 20 minutes and then the episode ends and he dies off screen. It's just, nothing really happens. There's no real tension. You don't really care about the character and it just is unlikable and unrelatable. So there's nothing really here to latch onto. In seventh place, we have Dreams in the Witch House. Now the tone of this one was really just what ruined it the most to me. The upbeat narrative and the comedic relief character of the rat was just very strange. I didn't like it. It was hilarious when he got kicked, uh, but that was mostly for my own comedy than the actual, you know, show's comedy. I don't think the tone really fits the thing that this series seems to be trying to go for. And I get that they're trying something new and I respect it, but it, I, I, I personally think that it didn't work. The protagonist was also one of the least believable. Like I know that it's gonna be incredibly heartbreaking to see a, a, a sibling and a twin sibling at that uh, pass away, but dedicating his entire adult life to bring back a child ghost was just very strange. Like I didn't move on 20 years later. It's, it's a bit weird. Coming in in sixth place, we have Lot 37. Now, I kind of like this episode, but it just has a load of themes that don't really fit together. You've got the guy paying off debt. You've got the racist guy. You've got the Nazi summoning a demon to eat his sister. It's just a lot of things that come together at once and they don't really become one. They just are all kind of the, like these three themes that are all smushed into each other. And it, none of them really just gelled that well for me. Also, the expo dump in the middle is just horrific. I know that it's a shortest episode and you need to get the information there somehow, but you could have honestly done it without the expo dump and just had a few teasers about these things happening and it would have probably been a lot better and, you know, let the audience work it out themselves. And the audience only working out stuff themselves because they feel very smart. And the audience, they're pretty dumb, so they need to feel smart. In fifth place, we have the viewing and this really upsets me because I love this one. It looks so good, but it's just nothing. Watching it for the first time, I was glued to the screen because visually it is amazing. And, you know, watching it again, I was just looking at it like, wow, this is amazing, but wow, nothing is happening. It's a good character episode, but 
I don't know, I just wanted more attention on the creature itself and the rock itself. I think it would have been better to introduce the rock earlier, even introduce the creature earlier, give it a little bit more on-screen time to make it a little bit more of a freaky entity that, you know, they have to survive. It's absolutely worth watching this one at least once for the art style, but if you're expecting, you know, a lot of horror and a lot of questions to be answered, there's nothing here that does that. In fourth place, we have Outside. Now, I enjoyed this episode a lot, and that is mainly down to the great performance by K Katie. It cannot be Katie Mikuchi. M Michucci? Michu Katie, she does a great job. It was an excellent performance. I loved it. She absolutely carried the episode and does a great job showing her descent into madness uh, while using the cream. And scenes opposite the TV, which is like, that's hard to do. She's acting opposite a you know, rectangular light box. She does a really great job and was really convincing. The problem is that no one is a believable character in this. You know, she's not believable because she's like, she's got a lovely husband who says, there's nothing wrong with you. And she's like, well, there is stuff wrong with me. And she wants to be like these horrible women that I can't see why anyone would want to be like. I still really enjoyed the creepy TV man, the body horror, and of course, Kate's performance. But it's not an overly scary episode and not overly believable either, but still a lot of fun. In third place, we have The Murmuring. Now, this was for sure the scariest episode, as I mentioned, with some of the tensest scenes in the dark house and the jump scares were absolutely earned. The tension built excellently. And it wasn't just like, oh, big loud noise. It was like you are in the dark and then something comes at you and you are just dreading it as it comes to you. Even just watching it on the screen and then imagining it happening in real life, like, good God, that is pretty scary. The characters, though very few of them, are both incredibly believable. Excellent performance by my boy Andy. The Brit, UK number one. It really isn't. We are really not. But anyway, I really just feel like it would have been better to leave the ambiguity in. Let us think that this is possibly all in Nancy's head. Um, if they just remove that scene from the groundskeeper, this one would probably go up a point at least. But they didn't, so I'm going to leave it there. And third place, that's Podium, baby. That's pretty good. In second place, we have Pikmin's model. This is probably the second scariest episode um, with the madness from the paintings flowing into Thurber and then via Thurber, the audience. Neve one is really short about what exactly he's seeing. Is this actually real? Or is he just going mad? It really does keep you guessing. And then the eventual escalation of his violent um, nightmares to eventually the violent end that meets him and his family is, you know, pretty graphic and pretty grim and pretty damn spooky. As I said in the review, the one thing that I would have liked to see is more of Pikmin's monsters coming to life rather than just the one that we see. We saw the one creature and the end of Thurbis' family, but he'd drawn a ton of monsters, so it would have been cool to see a lot more of them and spend a bit more time in his house. I think they probably could have got away without the 20 year gap rather than, you know, half the episode be in the past and then half the episode be in the future. He could have really extended that length in his house. But anyway, I digress. It's still a really good episode and it's a shame we didn't get to see more of the monsters, but still really good. And in first place, we of course have the autopsy. Was it going to be anything else? This might be personal preference because this one isn't too outright scary. I adore this episode. I love the concept of the super intelligent body riding alien to influence others whilst on scene. Like it said, it's taken down nations and empires and that is pretty spooky. The scene of the alien talking to the doctor while performing the autopsies on itself is amazing with the gross effects of the body and the excellent writing and the performances between the doctor and Alan or Sykes or whatever you want to call him are just fantastic. The only thing that I would change is the beginning 25 minutes as I said it just felt a bit too long. The, the episode could have been either shorter and just get rid of that or it could have been the same length and just devote more of the time to the autopsy or the special of the scene between the doctor and alan that was by far the best scene in the entire series so more of that would have been amazing that might just be me wanting more time in the lab with doc and the alien but hey it was pretty cool what can i say and that's my ranking i really enjoyed the series overall i think i would watch again you know five or six of the eight episodes which is pretty good um it wasn't the scariest thing i've ever seen i was kind of expecting it to be a lot more horror and you know making me actually scared, but it was mostly just creepy throughout with a few great moments of tension and some amazing special effects and of course design. Uh, I love how they brought a bunch of different directors together to put their own twist on these classic stories and of course I love my boy GDT introducing everything that was amazing. Uh, so basically what I'm trying to say is if season two isn't just um, eight episodes of Guillermo just riffing and telling us about these creepy things, I'm going to be incredibly disappointed. Anyway, let me know what you thought of the show if you've seen it. Let me know if you thought this video by leaving a like or the other one and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos. And finally, if you're feeling especially big penis, consider supporting the channel directly, either through YouTube memberships or a Patreon on the Patreon. Doing so gets you early insights into future content, increased voting power, discounts on merch, as well as shout outs at the end of videos like Henry Tuff, his spots at the Officer's Tier. Thank you to all supporters. One last thank you for watching. And for now, I've been Colonel Damders, and I will see you next turn.